try. <laughs> And then, yeah, that market for the rest of you yeah. for sure. Ah, okay, yeah. I don't uh, think I will say anything, but... Yeah, yeah me neither, so... Just in case, but... Thank you. Oh, I, I'm still changing the language, so... Let's see if... <rire> bon, n'êtes pas obligé de rester sur scène, peut-être au début, hein, c'est pas grave. Je sais pas. I'll make it clear. Ah non. I'll take my case. Of which I'm certain. Maybe we should do a concert. C'est vrai qu'on avait 30 minutes, on avait, pu... on, avait 30, on avait 90 minutes, on avait tout le temps de faire un concert. Hein. On a 90 minutes Waouh wow. Tu aurais dû me laisser prendre la guitare, ça aurait pris la trompette. Fait... Non mais là cette fois-ci j'ai décidé de voyager. Je pouvais faire la batterie. Et maintenant, tu Si, sûrement. Voilà. All right, welcome back. So this is a, the highly anticipated Coq developer session. Uh, which, uh, unusually this year, we're having it in the middle to uh, accommodate the speakers. Um, so Mathieu has graciously, graciously agreed to give a sh the usual short presentation on um, recent features in Coq, recent developments. Um, and then we'll have most of the session time devoted to audience questions. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll have Mathieu start with the, the talk, and then uh, we'll have the panelists introduce themselves uh, and, and then get on with uh, audience questions. Um, so yeah, take it away. Thank you. Okay, so a few news, uh, so the outline of my presentation, I'm going to talk about kind of a mix of all the main uh, visible features that have been uh, added to COC 8.17, 18, and 19, a little bit about the COC platform, um, things about the COC future and uh, the roadmaps, and then I'm going to highlight uh, two uh, kind of um, uh, developments, I mean large developments, um, that uh, you should know about. And then we'll have the usual Q&A. Okay. 
Uh, so this last year, we released quite a bunch of uh, Coq versions, uh, starting with 8.17 around January and March uh, uh, 2023. There was a platform released in January, actually, also uh, for the previous uh, 8.16 version. Um, we have point releases that are uh, regularly uh, released, and also release candidates that I encourage people to, to try, uh, because we, we kind of uh, like to have the feedback on, uh, on, this, uh, on these versions. Um, so it was quite a busy year, but uh, as you can see, we have a pretty uh, well uh, uh, sought out uh, release process now, and we are able to, uh, to release uh, as, we, as, we, as we go. Okay, and um, just the platform might be a bit uh, late. It's a, it's a large project uh, to, uh, um, to have Coq uh, installable on a Mac OS or uh, on Linux or Windows with a bunch of, uh, of libraries and a current set of libraries. I'm gonna uh, talk about it a bit later. Uh, but of course it takes time to, uh, to develop this and to maintain this. Okay, so quick uh, overview of some of the features you can find uh, in 8.19 uh, that were uh, released throughout, uh, throughout this year. Um, there's been a lot of work on uh, uh, notations, uh, allowing to activate and deactivate them uh, locally. I'm going to demo that. Um, there's been work also on, uh, on scopes, so the syntactic scopes that you can assign uh, uh, for parsing. Uh, I'm going to de demonstrate that as well. Uh, a lot of work has gone into uh, improving LTAC2 so that it could actually replace uh, LTAC implementations. So there is, there is a way already to, uh, to interoperate between LTAC2 and LTAC1 if you want to uh, port your development. Um, and there are much richer APIs now uh, for developing with LTAC2 um, and a, a nicer uh, programming interface in the sense of a case compiler, for example, to write deep pattern matchings on uh, LTAC2 values and a lot of bug fixes. And the main new features from the kernel point of view is uh, sort polymorphism, which was just introduced is in uh, 8.19. And basically the idea is that you can generically define uh, some things that will work over prop, as prop type, or whatever uh, new sort we add in the future. Um, and finally, there have been a lot of uh, standard library improvements on around arithmetic libraries, lists, and uh, uh, analysis, so we remember uh, library. I'm not going to go over, over that, but you can uh, look at it in the changes. Okay, so a little demo. Let's see. Um, okay. So as you probably all know, you can have notations in Coq. Um, here I'm using as a notation for a natural number addition. Um, but there was no way uh, before to uh, disable a notation at some point in your, in your development. Uh, now you can do that, but of course notations are overloaded, so you might have multiple definitions of the same notation that are interpreted in as uh, different things. So exa for example, plus is also a notation for the sum type uh, in the type scope. Yes, I can do it larger. Okay. Um, so when you want to disable a notation, uh, you need to uh, either say I want to disable all the interpretations of uh, the, the addition or some specific ones by specifying, for example, here, that I want to disable just the um, notation for addition of natural numbers. And then it's no longer available as an interpretation when we type check terms. Okay. Uh, I can also disable all the notations. and. So the notations are still there, so just not used for, for interpretation. So it's not a way to fix the problem of uh, incompatible notations in different libraries, in the sense that the parser is still, uh, still extended with the notations. They have just disabled interpretations. OK, so I'm going to re-enable that. Um, and you can also uh, disable uh, uh, abbreviations, which are special notations which start with an identifier, which are treated specially and don't, do not need uh, those ones uh, to modify the parser. Okay. Uh, temporary scopes. Um, maybe you've uh, noticed that uh, this, the scoping uh, annotation that we have uh, in uh, notations here says that uh, P has to be interpreted in the type scope and all its subterms as well. And the temporary scopes uh, um, 
allow to to uh, use uh, the notation scopes just at uh, at uh, at the top level of uh, of the parsing. So in particular, uh, this prevents to use the same notation for different meanings in the same expression. For example, here uh, I'm using uh, the conjunction of uh, application of the p predicate and the q predicate, but uh, in p I'm also using a multiplication of natural numbers, and this uh, cannot uh, type check because here, uh, the, the star is, uh, in, is interpreted as a, as a type star, and X is not a type. Okay, so if you use this uh, syntax with this underscore, it says that I'm going to use the scope just at the top level, and then everything works out nicely. And it's probably the default, which should have been uh, this uh, temporary scope, uh, the introduction of scopes, uh, but now you can use it uh, using this uh, underscore scope. And there is a plan to actually make it the default in arguments and in notations in the future to switch the meaning of the underscore and the non-underscore one. Yes. Can you repeat the question? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the syntax for the new uh, scope annotation is with underscore and your scope. Uh, something that was actually not introduced uh, uh, in 8.17, but before in 8.16, it was improved on before, uh, after, uh, is the ability to do uh, selective imports. I don't know if any people are aware uh, that uh, this is something that you can do. Um, so when you import something from a library or a module, uh, you can uh, give the set of names that you actually want to have available uh, unqualified. And the, the other names are just going to be available, but with qualification. So typically, if I import some lemma from a library in Coq, um, uh, and I select just uh, the NNPP uh, lemma here, then I don't get access to the classic axiom, which is part of this file. Uh, but I can always access, have access to it uh, in a qualified way. And I just get the unqualified uh, version for the lemmas I selected. Um, and you have import categories available, so you can say, oh, I just want to import uh, the coercion scenes, canonical structures, notations from this library, but not, uh, not the rest. Okay. Mm. So on the way to implement sort polymorphism, we first uh, introduced a, a generalization in the, in the way we do type inference so that we do not commit to the type sort uh, too early when we elaborate. So typically, when uh, uh, you write uh, this statement uh, in, a, in previous versions of Coq, it would uh, assume that P is a type uh, and, um, and come to this point of the, of the expression and find out that actually uh, P should have been of type prop, but it's too late at this point to, uh, to change the, the type of, the, uh, of what was guessed for the, for the binder P. Uh, so this is no longer the case. We have a notion of sort variable during a, a unification that allows us to defer this uh, choice. Okay, and that's something that, as a as a newcomer to Coq, you might uh, find a bit disturbing uh, when uh, when you get these errors as a newcomer. In what version is this included? 8.18, I think. Mm. So sort polymorphism. Uh, it's an extension of universe polymorphism, uh, where instead of just being able to bind uh, the, the universe levels of, uh, of some expressions, uh, you can also bind these uh, sort qualities. So the sort qualities are going to be prop, s prop, or type. Um, so here I'm writing a, a polymorphic identity function that's parameterized by a sort. It takes a type A in this sort and returns a function from A to A. Okay, so now I can have instances uh, of my identity function at prop, which will have type for a prop a to a, at set, or rather, at type zero, if you like. So set is really just a synonym for type zero now. Um, and at arbitrary types. Okay, so this can be useful to avoid duplication of uh, inductive types, although it's not entirely clear how uh, uh, we will um, 
uh, deal with the different sorts uh, for inductive types in general. So right now there is a simple version that is implemented, is 8.19, but we will need more uh, experience with, uh, with the system to see how we develop. But still I can define a few um, inductive types generically, like uh, the empty type, uh, which can live uh, in any sort, and get the notion of uh, false, which is the empty type in prop, and, uh, and the empty set. Uh, from this uh, from this definition generically okay uh, maybe more interestingly I can do a, a polymorphic project and get the conjunction in prop or the conjunction in uh, in type from it and write generic lemmas that will apply to all uh, the notion of uh, of products that I have okay so here I'm defining oops it's a bit small I'm defining equivalence of uh, two types as a, a product of a function from A to B and a function from B to A. Okay, and I can write generic lemmas on this. All the system is adapted so that you can work with that. So there's a bit of trickery here to uh, deal with uh, universes, as you can see. We'll come back to that. Okay, so this gives us, of course, uh, the three instances of uh, <coughs> this proof of equivalence for prop as prop and type. And this works uh, correctly with uh, the elimination restrictions, I should mention. Uh, if you instantiate some uh, inductive type as prop, uh, you might have restrictions on the eliminations, and this is accounted for uh, in, the, in the kernel. OK, finally, um, a bit of uh, advertisement for attack 2. Um, so in this version, a uh, lot of uh, new data structures and APIs were introduced. In particular, we have arrays, or mutable arrays, that you can use to program your tactics um, uh, with a fairly large uh, uh, API. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay. And uh, we also have a library for maps and sets uh, on uh, some uh, subset of possible uh, key types. In particular, you have integers, constants, inductive, so you want, if you want to build maps from um, um, inductive names to something, uh, you, you have this available directly in, uh, in LTAC. Okay, I'm not going to go through the example uh, in particular, but it, it works. Mm, and finally, as I mentioned, the, at the beginning, the uh, match construct of uh, LTAC 2 was a bit primitive. You only had uh, one level matches, basically. But it's been extended to support uh, <coughs> nested matching and uh, as closes with an efficient case compilation algorithm. OK, any questions? No. Yeah. So uh, about the universes, um, in the example that you had, you had uh, quite a bit of annotations. Are they actually necessary? You mean this one? Uh, let me remember. <laughs> uh, you can always, well, you don't have to put them in, for sure. It works just as well. Uh, but then what? For, for the lemma, yes, and for the declaration, hmm? for, for the definition up there. Ah, you mean for the definition of the inductive type? Yeah. Uh, if I don't quant quantify on the sort here? I don't know. <laughs> Let's try. Um, then I can do this. A uh, priori, it's just going to be backward compatible. <coughs> it will just mean that we have products in type and not any sort, right? So it's not generalized so automatically? No, no, no. The, the sort are not generalized automatically. Yeah. So the then this relates to the second question. Does this replace, or is it planned to replace template polymorphism? Yes, that's the goal, yeah. But not yet? Not yet. Because you, don't, you cannot generalize yet. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Any other question on the demo? Can you disable notations only for printing, or all notations, only all notations? Like, can you say, I don't, 
I still want to accept 0 plus 1, but I don't want it to print as 0 plus 1. Uh, I did not play with the system enough to do that, but I think yeah, it's pretty flexible in that respect. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, a bit silly question, but if I want a, a short to define a short command that disables, say, 23 notations, can I do this? And uh, I mean, I mean, more generally, commands are something that you cannot uh, include inside a tactic, and, and this yes. seems really painful. <laughs> I don't uh, know if something can be done about that. Ah. Yeah, you should. Yeah, you should put them all in the same score, I guess, to do that easily. Ah. If a, you import a module that disable that disables all notations. Yes. Then what? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can write it once and import it uh, multiple times. Oh, yeah. that that was related to my question. If I define a module, and within this module, for some specific use cases, I disable the notations from a specific scope, if I import this module, uh, will it disable the notations uh, as well? And if so, uh, does removing the notation import category uh, stop the module I import from, disable, from disabling these notations in the future? Probably. You will have to play with it. OK. I would guess it like this. <laughs> uh, as I, I'm not sure. I think notations support local and global and export. But you, you have, you have I think so. Yes. Yeah. If I have to say that there there has been discussions about um, the developments being un, uh, not robust to imports. And so a lot of the of the design that is happening around imports and the possibility to say you want to import only a few things and things like that is part of an effort to, to decrease this amount of of uh, of uh, uh, fragileness. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose it's a secondary question, but why is there a space between the pipe and the curly brace on the right, but not on the left? Is that because at curly brace pipe is a token on the left, but not on the right? You mean, can I do that? Yes. Yes, I can do it. All right. <laughs> Great. I think it looks much better. But the, yeah, there is a passing ambiguity because of this, uh, this pipes, indeed. Let's move on. Okay. Um, doo -doo. Okay. So apart from this, a few other changes that you oh, sorry. Uh, want to be aware of. Uh, well, you're going to be aware if you if you've not been through that yet that uh, different localities for hints and instances are changing. Uh, in particular, so that people are aware of uh, where th where things are exported. Um, so you're going to get a lot of warnings for that. Uh, there is some improved control over warnings uh, that should allow you to use warnings to deprecate uh, definitions or libraries more easily. Um, finally, lazy, simple CBN eval, so the reduction tactics, can do head reduction and not only strong reduction, which is a common user request. Um, there's been uh, the addition of precise profiling support for, uh, for performance profiling of uh, code. Um, so Emilio is more aware than me of uh, what, what this actually means in practice. Uh, but OCaml5 compatibility, uh, you can compile Coq with it, you can run it, but there's been some uh, performance issues that are being worked on. And the main problem you can have is that a native compilation is no longer available, for now at least. 
So a bit about the platform. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a coherent distribution of the code packages with binary installers for uh, standard platforms. Uh, it's customizable, so you have, you have a set of scripts that you can um, uh, customize to do your own uh, variant of the platform for a lecture, for example, or if you want to add a specific version of uh, some development. And, and it's going to build all this, uh, all this for you. Uh, there's a charter that explains what are the uh, criteria for being in platform and what we expect from uh, uh, package authors. Uh, it's been maintained by Michael Sochtrup and no Roman Titley, who is here. Um, he's helping with the maintenance of this, which is quite a bit of work. Uh, and we've added an editorial board uh, for the inclusion of packages, uh, of which uh, uh, I and Eve are here, I think. Right, so what it's like in, uh, I mean, the last stable release uh, was on 8.17, and there's a new one about 8.18 that is in a draft mode, but it's, it's usable for 8.18, yes. Um, as you can see, there's quite a bit of packages. About 50 uh, packages are included. Uh, um, you are welcome to uh, submit yours if you, if you think you have a package that is of general uh, uh, usage. Mm. Okay, so about the future, um, we have uh, a big feature that's coming very soon to COC, which is the addition of uh, rewild rules uh, that was uh, implemented by Jan Leray, Theo Winterhalter, and Gaëtan Gilbert mainly, uh, that follows up on a more theoretical work uh, by Theo and co-authors. Um, so we, you will have the ability to introduce uh, um, symbols, so axioms, uh, which have specific uh, computational behavior by uh, specifying the rewrite rules uh, associated to them. Um, again, a, a little bit like a, with the OCaml5, a caveat is that uh, we are not going to support as a native uh, comp uh, compilation uh, and the VM compilation yet, because you need to, uh, to really extend them to support the uh, rewrite matching and stuff like this. Uh, it's not, not, not been done yet. Um, we hope to also uh, generalize this uh, use of uh, sort polymorphism uh, in JSTDLib to m have more generic definitions and less duplication. In particular, we hope that we could have just one instance of the morphisms library for set of writing, which currently have a duplication for prob and, uh, and type. Um, on my part, I've been working on uh, uh, extending the universe system of Cox so that we can have algebraic universes everywhere. So that means that uh, in the example I've shown, I've added constraint to say that uh, u, was, uh, u and v were, slower, uh, were smaller than some universe k. Uh, it's just because we have limitations in the way we handle universes that prevent us from saying just uh, k is the maximum of u and v. Uh, and that's the goal of this, of this work. And it should both simplify uh, the, uh, the user interface uh, for uh, working with universes in the sense that you can annotate uh, precisely uh, without having to introduce these constraints that come a bit of, out of nowhere. Um, yes. Uh, the work on LTAC2 will continue also uh, to make it a real uh, uh, replacement for LTAC1, and that uh, work that's mainly being done by uh, Gaëtan Gilbert and Pierre-Marie Pedro. And we hope also to integrate uh, the verified extraction uh, pipelines that, has been, uh, that have been developed. So we've seen a Certicoc uh, WASM this morning. Uh, these things can be used uh, uh, as uh, alternatives to the current extraction to, uh, to OCaml. I'll come back to that. Um, and you can have a look at the short-term roadmap uh, for COC, which we hope to uh, continue updating in the future. Uh, for news on what's, what's coming to the system. If you want to give us feedback, uh, it's very welcome. So the big uh, elephant in the room, the renaming. Uh, so you've probably seen on Twitter a few weeks ago, or two weeks ago, um, that indeed on our roadmap it is written that we will rename uh, the Coq Proof Assistant into the Rock Interactive Serum Prover, which you can abbreviate the Rock Prover, or simply Rock. Um, it's coming from a long uh, discussion. Uh, we asked during the last survey users to uh, express their opinions on the renaming and what names uh, they would like. 
Of course, uh, the result is split. Some people hate the idea that we rename. Some people love it. Um, but the majority was either for the renaming or neutral. Uh, and in the development team, the majority was uh, uh, for renaming. Uh, and the work name was actually proposed by Clément, I think. Uh, it's going to be pronounced like rock and roll. Uh, it pays homage to Rocancourt, which was the birthplace of, uh, of Coq. And of course, it suggests the rock solid software. So the plan is to make the renaming effective this year with an updated visual identity, website, and a first release. So in the meantime, please still keep using the Coq name until we have something you can really point to. And we are aware uh, that there is a programming language uh, being developed that's named Rock, and the convert is true as well. They know that we are renaming to Rock, and it's going to be fine. Um, of course, you can, if you need to disambiguate, you can always qualify Rock Prover, Rock ITP, uh, if there is an ambiguity. A bit above the longer-term vision, um, so we're going to continue to implement, uh, to develop this, uh, this uh, Rock Interactive Serum Prover. Uh, collaboratively with some focus on uh, genericity, uh, with building on work on sort polymorphism, rewrite rules, and the many meta languages that you have available. Um, we hope to introduce new sorts uh, that allow you to work in uh, different variants of type theory uh, for effectful compu computation uh, or erasable data. Uh, maybe some new uh, sorts will come up as well. Uh, we are really keen on integrating ideas from uh, observational type theory, uh, which is a variant of type theory which supports natively the uniqueness of identity proofs, functionalism, and extensionality, and quotient types, which are uh, very common uh, axioms that uh, people have to use or uh, are used to add in their development uh, to adjust reason and programs. And it should not be the case that, uh, that you need to add axioms to uh, do this. Um, we are going to still focus on enabling uh, as efficient as possible embedded domain-specific logics that are iris. And uh, we're also working uh, on providing transfer tools a bit between, uh, between developments. Of course, we're going to continue supporting the wide area of, uh, the wide array of, uh, of developments that we have today in COC. Um, we're going to also focus on robustness. Um, we already have a kernel that be uh, really uh, fine-tuned uh, for performance, but we have less uh, correctness uh, um, uh, guarantees. So we want to increase that, in particular, continuing on the Metacog project. Um, and finally, there's a big part also on uh, focusing on accessibility and productivity, bringing the work to uh, students and engineers. In particular, there are intensive efforts on uh, user interface development, and you'll see talk by... Uh, uh, Roma and Emilio this afternoon about this. And um, um, we need strong automation tools and library management so support, and for that we also need uh, support from the, from the community uh, to develop this. Uh, planned events about COG, so there will be a workshop in uh, uh, Tbilisi uh, in Georgia, and there's a usual uh, COG users and developers workshop where uh, Power users or people interested in development of plugins uh, can meet with, uh, with developers which are interested uh, um, in uh, collaborating on some implementations. So this is going to happen in the summer. We don't know uh, where yet. Okay, so some highlights um, of recent developments uh, around COC. Uh, I'd like to highlight the uh, COC LP uh, meta language, which is a uh, an embedded interpreter for Lambda Prolog that allows you to write code terms, call unification, and th do things like that. That's a nice tutorial uh, by Enrico Tassi on this. Uh, on top of this meta language, uh, there is this uh, hierarchy builder, which is um, a plugin that allows you to uh, declaratively, declaratively uh, state uh, how you want to uh, build a hierarchy of, uh, of uh, mathematical structures or computer science structures, like categories. Um, and from that, it, uh, it generates um, all the definitions, notations, uh, and tools that you need uh, to work with that hierarchy using the, uh, the methodology of packed classes of, uh, of MATCOMP. And this, this has been used uh, to um, uh, 
uh, and integrated in the MatComp library as a way to uh, uh, to produce the structures. Um, also implemented in CockLP is Tract, which is an extensible framework for transfer uh, between theories, which are not necessarily isomorphic, so think uh, 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 integers and natural numbers. Uh, when you have a, an automation uh, tactic, for example, on, a, on integers, it will not work on your type of uh, natural numbers. You need a transfer theorem, and this is uh, something that automates that, uh, that process. And there is an ERC uh, led by Asya Mabubi, uh, which is really uh, uh, concentrating on, uh, on this subject of, uh, of automation. Okay. Finally, there is a Liberabasi project, uh, which is about uh, uh, using code for teaching, um, where they are revisiting elaboration phases for natural mat mathematical expression, for example, fine-tuning time classes and canonical structures. And this is led by Yves Berto. So if you have questions, Yves can answer them. Um, and the last highlight, uh, shameless plug for me, uh, uh, we have now this uh, verified uh, erasing compilation pipeline from Galina through uh, Lambda Box to C through this uh, um, uh, Certicoc project. Uh, so it's C that you can compile either with Comcert but also other uh, compilers. Uh, what happened for Certicoc recently is that I made a beta release and we have a bootstrapable uh, Certicoc in the sense Certicoc can compile itself. Um, there's a verified GC, of course. Uh, there's been work on being able to link uh, code that you verify in C with code that is produced by Certicoct. So there's this very FFI project that allows you to do that. And you've seen this morning, uh, that's also a WebAssembly target. We've been also working on uh, making, I mean, building a kind of alternative to the current extraction of Coq, which targets OCaml. But to target OCaml, uh, it introduces a lot of object magic casts. Um, so we've tried to do a, a, a correct um, a compilation from Coq to not OCaml, but malfunction, which represents uh, the first untyped language of the OCaml compiler for us. Um, you can read about it. And there's also uh, a target of, uh, of this, uh, some web and smart contract languages like Liquidity and Elm. Uh, that this has been part of the concert project uh, by Daniel Enkoff and Bas Peters is also uh, uh, participating in that. And this one uses a type erasure phase, so it provides uh, some, uh, some interfaces in the functional languages for, for for the functions you erase, which is not possible in general, but for some subset of uh, programs which have uh, easy translations to the target, this is possible. And that's it. Do you have questions? All right, we have lots of time for questions before lunch. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yeah. you should. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Emilio Jesus Gallego Arias, uh, and I'm a researcher at INRIA. And my main interest uh, these days is uh, on uh, user interfaces and, uh, and certain proving. Hello, my name is Yves Berto. I'm a senior uh, research scientist at INRIA. I've been using COC for about 30 years. And um, the, my main focus right now is on helping the social, as, social aspects of the development team and trying to find hiring positions. And uh, so if you are interested in working for the development of COC, you can talk to me. And uh, I uh, will be uh, involved in the renaming effort. And I've also tried to, to obtain uh, funding from uh, the energy management to work on uh, making COC more easily usable for teaching purposes, but especially directed at uh, mathematical, mathematics students' audience. So that was the Liber Abbasi thing that uh, um, Mathieu was talking about. 
So hi, I'm Roman Setli, and I'm the latest, uh, well, recruit by Eve. Uh, so I've just been made a permanent uh, research engineer at INRIA, working on uh, user interfaces for COC and mainly VS COC. And as much as said earlier, also I've been helping out with the COC platform, among other things. Okay. He needs to present Mathieu. He was already. <laughs> Okay, if no one has a question, I have a very superficial question. In the rename, you rename Coq into Rock, and that's good. And also, the proof assistant became theorem prover or interactive pre prover. Uh, why is the second? I like proof assistant, and I'm curious about how you decided to move away from, from, from that. Mm, I don't know if I have a, a very this is This is open. Uh, I, I, I don't want to, to start another, another poll to decide that, but <laughs> I, I think uh, already, already now we were able to say cock prover. I, I think it's just if you don't, don't want to have an ambiguity with the rock language, you just have to put something that to say that you are using a proof tool of some sort, but then you can use the expression you want. Uh, that's not, we're not pushing too far on that. Maybe we'll, we'll use something for the communication, that's for sure. Uh, if if you really want to, to the word proof assistant to be used, maybe you have to knock at the at the door at the right time, and that will that will happen. So, when I hear theorem prover, I think more of automated theorem prover because it's the common case where we use them. And the fact that is what is nice with proof assistant is that people know that they still have to write the proof themselves, and that whole cock will help them. Uh, so I think it gives a good impression of what the usage of mm. proof assistant. I don't, I don't mean But at the same time, it. maybe provers should all be interactive. You can think it that way as well. I think that was the point also. Uh, Hello, thank you for uh, news of all the exciting things coming. Um, I'm interested in uh, notations, and and specifically, what I've noticed over the past uh, few months trying to revamp the notations of software foundations and encountering some difficulties uh, is that there seems to be the the, the documentation of the notation mechanisms uh, in the manual is helpful but doesn't go too far. Uh, I think in the community there are various people that have done more advanced things or that, that understand very well. Uh, so there's some latent knowledge. And then there's a set of people like myself that uh, that are not necessarily in the set of people that have this latent knowledge but that want to do reasonably sophisticated things. Um, so I would be interested first of all in gauging maybe from a, a quick poll of the audience uh, how many people here are like me? They're they're uh, trying to do somewhat sophisticated things and uh, and having trouble. <laughs> That's kind of what I suspected. So then my second question is: What could we do about um, about making the set the sets of uh, people that want to do sophisticated things and uh, people that are able to do sophisticated things uh, more overlapping? Uh, is it better documentation? Is it a uh, is it a some kind of forum for people to help each other? Uh, what is it? I don't have a right answer. Ask Robert how he does it. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what I've discovered is there's basically look in the manual and you find a few hints, mm. uh, and then there's send an email to Hugo or maybe Robert. Mm. Um, I would like to have something in the middle. Mm -hmm. So. Maybe in terms of direct suggestions, uh, this could be a call for some kind of joint effort, uh, which I would very happily participate in, uh, but maybe could be organized by the, mm. uh, the ROC team mm. uh, to uh, some kind of community effort to, to build better documentation or, um, or even examples, uh, annotated examples of fancy things that people have done would be so helpful. So it need, need not be a gigantic effort, but, uh, but a little bit would be super. So my impression is that uh, you know we already have a very uh, 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 comprehensive effort of documenting things that can be done with Coq, thanks to the Logical F uh, Foundations uh, series of books. But this is not the same level. 
And, uh, but the other thing we have is uh, we have something which is called plugin tutorials. And maybe that's more, that should be closer to that, that level. So uh, this is a good topic to put to the next uh, Coq user and developer workshop because we could, uh, maybe we can start it uh, by, by uh, a mail or a Zulip uh, chat initiative. But we can try to make sure there will be more um, critical mass on the topic uh, on, on the occasion of one of these uh, Coq user and developer workshops. So I'm just noting that down. So just to, uh, to react to your, your yeah, request. That, that would be great. Maybe we could even start assembling a library of slightly annotated ex examples earlier. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think in, a, in the same vein of like gathering people that do the same thing 10 times in different places in the community, uh, I think there was a discussion on the Coxulib a while back. I think uh, Gregory was on there. I don't know who else was on trying to um, uh, unify efforts of people building bits of a universe polymorphic standard library. I think there's a lot of duplication effort on, on these kind of things now. The standard library is not universe polymorphic currently, but there are a lot of people that need these things. I know there's quite a lot in, in Metacoc. I've been basically copy-pasting some of it for the uh, Martin of Alacoc thing we presented at CPP, and I think there are other places in the community that do the same. So I think if, if I don't know exactly how this should materialize, but uh, I think it would be nice to try and also make these these efforts kind of converge, and also maybe try and use the the sort polymorphism as well uh, in in these kind of things uh, would be would be quite nice, even if the probably for performance reasons and backwards compatibility we will not replace the standard library anytime soon but at least trying to get into that direction and, and get something there that others can use would be quite nice. So, yeah. What is the current uh, recommendation on the IDs for COG? I mean, I have my way to doing, I use proof general, et cetera, but uh, sometimes when new people ask me to what's recommendation it is, is it still COG IDs, uh, official ID, which we should recommend to the new users? Yes, there is VS Coke, obviously. So, my take on this, and I say my because maybe uh, uh, other people will want to, to correct that, is that somehow Coke ID should be phased out because it's too much of an effort to maintain. And uh, the solution based on a state of the art uh, programming environment like Code or Codium, VS Code or VS Codium. Uh, is 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 the 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 road to go, and we have two experiments on the topic right now, and I can't really say, uh, can't really push one over the other. I, I, I in fact I should push one over the other because I've making been making sure that we hired somebody to work on the topic, and this is Roma, so this is the VS uh, VS Coq effort. And there is a, there's been a lot of effort that's been, that should be respected by, by Emilio on, on doing uh, the Coq LSP, LSP effort, which is also using the, 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 the Codium VS Code and VS Codium base. So all this, we, we, we want these experiments to, 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 well, one of them is not an experiment. It's really, I want to, I want it to be, uh, uh, manned for, for the long term, and for the other one, I have to understand how to make it more permanent. And so th this is, I, I can't give more recommendation than that. The only thing I can say is, in, in my opinion, the Coq ID effort is going to fade out, phase out. For the proof general effort, I can't say anything. I don't know, I don't have a view of the future. I'm myself mostly a proof general user. And I have the impression that it is the only one that provides the level of productivity I'm attached to for now. So I, I, I still need to understand and do enough testing about all these. So I don't have any recommendations. But since uh, since uh, Emilio and Mike, Mike, so Mike. No, just to say that yeah, but sorry that I think Emacs uh, should be supported. I don't see a reason it should not be. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So Emacs, uh, maybe proof general, a different version of proof general, but should move on, I think. So, you know, for me, the, the, the way I see it, when I, when I said I was doing some sort of social engineering on these topics, 
I, I, I really tried to make an effort that we would have uh, people to man the position on working on user interface. And this is the effort that led to the hiring of Romain. And Romain comes with more of an experience of, on that topic uh, than an experience on the COG system. Although he, he was one of my previous students on COG anyway. But, so we have a sustained <laughs> effort there. And uh, this is the only thing I can say for this topic. For Proof General, this, this is not the result of an investment of INRIA. So it's going to, to live on if the community embraces it. And uh, I think it's the same for COC LSP. And I think for, for COC IDE, even the community had a hard time embracing it. So that's the reason why. That's my strategic view on it. You know. Hi. Um, so the uh, I'm very happy to see like more movement toward universe and sort polymorphism things because having the template universes pinned to a fixed universe is an actual source of incompatibilities between real world libraries. Like we have bug reports in Iris saying I can't import X and Iris because Iris imports SDPP which pins list to universe something and then game over. Uh, so I, I, I do hope the polymorphization of the stand library will happen because I don't really see any other way that we can actually compose the different libraries that we are building in the Rust in, in the Coq ecosystem, and increasingly we are seeing great compositions of libraries, but the the lack of a universe polymorphic standard library is is in the way of that. Um, but there's another topic which I would like to bring up, which is my like single biggest pain point working. Like basically every week that I work uh, in Iris in Coq, I run into some issue that I think is caused by unification. Something where I have to I want to write apply, and then I have to write write apply colon. I want to write apply in, and then I end up using rewrite because it just works better, even though it's silly to rewrite with an if and only if. Um, and uh, I, I couldn't fail to see that there's no unification mentioned uh, on the roadmap that we saw here. Uh, and it's been a topic that obviously has been at COGPL for five years or something, at least. I don't know. Uh, so I was just wondering uh, what the status of that is and uh, wanted to just signal boost that this is still a real world problem and everybody who learns Iris has to learn to just randomly try apply apply colon and some other things until unification is like happens to be happy. Okay, uh, so for the... My, I'm, it doesn't work my mic? I have a mic. Uh, first part, uh, it sh should be possible in principle to once we have this sort polymorphism working well for inductive, to just make the inductives polymorphic in the sonar library, so to get away from template polymorphism uh, and to avoid this, this big one. Yeah, uh, I'm, it should be. I don't. I don't guarantee it. Uh, for the second part, so this unifold effort, the idea that we. So right now we have two unification algorithms in Coq. One is used by the tactic. The, the vanilla tactics. One year is used by uh, typing, so when you enter a definition, uh, and they are uh, kind of incomparable in terms of uh, what what choices they make. And the idea of Unifold is to move everything to the one that uh, that is used for typing. Um, and it was blocked on uh, on some on this compatibility layer for primitive production that was introduced when we introduced prim primitive productions uh, in Iris. Actually, uh, so due, due to some uh, uh, real uh, backward incompatibilities that we would have had introduced uh, to fix it. Uh, so right now, it seems that we are on a path to solve this uh, primitive uh, projection uh, problem, mm -hmm. and then we sh should be able to uh, to go on on this uh, this project to unify the unifiers. Yes. Thanks for the update. Hello. Um, when defining coercions, there's this thing called the uniform inheritance condition, uh, which I ran into recently when trying to make my coercions also work for lists. And uh, when trying to research what was going on, I stumbled upon a bug report that was closed that read to me as if the uniform inheritance condition had been removed, yet there I still was getting warnings. 
Do you know what's going on there? Has it been removed? Is it going to be removed in future versions? Do I, did I misread something? Uh, my recollection is that it was made optional because it was too restrictive, but uh, maybe we don't have experts on this part here. You should ask on the lip, I guess. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll go back to an ecosystem question. Uh, so in my own project, I ended up uh, switching from Cockmake files to Dune. I don't know if I regret yet, but I was wondering what was the opinion of the community on the two different way of doing a build system for Cock and the fracture that is existing now. Maybe Emilio can answer this. Repeat the last sentence, sorry. Uh, I feel that now there are projects that use Dune, projects that use the original Cockmake file way of building project, and there is increasingly a fracture of different projects. And they are mutually compatible, so it's not that bad, but what's the plan? Is there a plan or an opinion of the where it will lead long term? Well, I, do, I don't see them in a position. Is, uh, well, I, I actually will we'll talk with Bakti a bit about the build systems today, but um, I don't think they're in opposition. It's just if you look, for example, this beautiful paper is called Bill Systems a la carte. There is a classification of Bill Systems, and actually, Make and Dune are really different in the technology they're using, but they can do. So it's a bit of what I would say for interfaces too, depending what are uh, your needs. You may have a different choice for a more uh, classical one or a more modern interface. So, for example, uh, Make, for example, you cannot even be set soundly with Make. There is a definition of soundness. So I don't think this is a fracture. It's clear to me, like knowing all what all the other theorem provers are doing and the way they're hidden, and also knowing industrial scale code bases that we are also handling in Coke with millions of lines, it's clear to me that make just doesn't cut it. So it's just a matter for the Dune. Uh, there is a kind of team uh, working on it. Uh, so it's uh, just a matter for Dune to become like uh, the, the, the kind of the standard build system for Coke. Of, co of course, if people want to use make, uh, they can use make, but. I see once Dune is stable, I will see very little reason to use Make. It's just Dune offers you a lot more features. Really, like, I don't know how many hours per week you can save, uh, depending on, I, on, on what are you building. So, depending on the size of your team, uh, I mean, like, so yeah. So, it's just, it's just, it's just Dune was a bit more as an experiment. It's true in Coke, sometimes we don't, maybe we should work differently, and actually, this is the roadmap. Sometimes Dune, for example, I expected it to be completed in one week. Uh, actually, uh, actually, in fact, it could have. Actually, it could have, and I understand why. Uh, because actually, but, but yeah, but I, I, I mean, it's just a different methodology. So yeah, it took way longer than it it, 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 it had to take also because it's a thing. But, but indeed, like, I don't see a lot of, well, make for whatever people wants to use make, but really it shouldn't be, most users at some point will find Dune better and easier. I think, I mean, you're free to do to, to I we are, we are very happy to hear if Dune is not working well for you, what make is working well for you. <laughs> that will be, I don't, I don't hear many people telling me, like, I love make files. I don't, totally, but, uh, but uh, uh, of course, uh, is, uh, you, uh, we are very happy to submit. Uh, a beta testing phase is going to start soon. So then it's, it's still a year for a stable release of this build language. So you just said uh, people who are using happy with make and not happy with Dune. So uh, I'm still using make files everywhere. I'm not thrilled with it. Uh, but I just legitimately don't know how to set up a Dune Cock project and have everything work. Um, whereas for make files, I copy paste the standard PP make file and everything works beautifully. So I think it is really a matter of, of documentation. Do we have a little entry in the reference manual? how to set up a project with Dune. So, but yeah, I agree, like for example, for 1.0 documentation, it's true we didn't spend a lot of docu time documenting because this tree is still not 1.0, so things are gonna change, but yeah, but I agree, documentation is a big, uh, is one of the big things missing for 1.0. So for now, but this was misunderstood, actually a problem we have with Dune is interesting. This is clearly marked as an experimental, but because it offers so many advantages to a few users, a lot of people embrace that. The people that need it, actually, or people that discover that. And my, actually, I, I started working on that for myself because 
uh, I was building coke. First, I started to build coke, and actually, with make, I was. And in fact, I can tell you, like before June, we had like bugs in the build system of coke, like a couple per month. And since we migrated, we reduced to zero, for example. But yeah, but it's true. Like uh, these things were a bit unplanned. Like we weren't expecting so many people to use it, so we got a lot more adoption. This experimental version that what we hope. There has been a change, I think, in June 3.8 about how to handle uh, COC modules and how to uh, specify the dependencies. And uh, it required to, to update a lot of June files to, to keep up with this change. Uh, will the interfaces be likely to, to, be, uh, to change afterwards in, uh, and the, the semantics of June files, uh, uh, will the semantics of June files change in the future or will it become stable at some point uh, as well? Actually, a great oh. property of Dune and is that uh, the build language is version. Okay. So indeed, once we release the 1.0 language, in theory, we should keep that compatible like for many years. Okay. All right. So yeah, actually that's pretty useful, though it has these advantages too. But yeah, but in principle, like, yeah, you can even try today, depending on the version you put, mm -hmm. it's gonna, it's gonna, it's true like now we are removing some old versions we discovered that are broken, for example, we didn't realize because we were, we, we have to do a bit more things, but, but in principle at 1.0, of course there is the issue if talks about maintenance, but I think like actually it's not very hard to maintain. It was very hard to design, but once the design is fixed, it's very easy to maintain the code. It's fairly trivial actually. Uh, of course the complicated code is by the, by the Dune co build system itself. That in Coke we only use, we are users of that code, yeah. I wanted to just quickly return to my point earlier about notation. I, uh, I realized that I had phrased my point as a general request to the COC team to do something, and, uh, but there seem to actually be a lot of people here with an interest uh, concretely, and I really do want to see progress in this area, so I don't want to lose the energy that's in the room or the connections between people that are in the room. So with all of that in mind, I'd like to make a concrete proposal to get started, uh, which is if you have an example of Talk notations that you feel proud of or that you feel illustrate something that you um, figured out, um, could you drop me an email? If you're interested in cock notations and making them better and how to use them better uh, and want to make sure that you're included in the discussion, could you drop me an email? And I will interface with the cock team uh, to make sure that some kind of discussion forum slash uh, repository slash whatever gets created. I'm Benjamin Pierce. <laughs> uh, completely different topic. Um, so one thing you mentioned earlier was LTAC2. Uh, having done some LTAC hacking last year, I am very much looking forward to never having to do that ever again. Um, so, uh, attack one hacking, I mean, so uh, looking forward to attack two. Um, the, I think my, my, um, I, I think there's like something that I'm, that, uh, that feels to be a bit missing to me here from the migration path currently, which is the way I view it, most of our users, Iris users, are using attack one to write their proof script. And honestly, for writing the stuff between you put between proof and QED, attack one is like fine. Uh, so I don't see a need to push them away from that. But to implement those tactics that we provide to them, we would really like to start to be able to migrate that to LTAC2. Mm -hmm. And currently, there's a lot missing on the FFI front between LTAC1 and LTAC2. That's kind of what I'm encountering every time I'm trying to just port something to LTAC2. Uh, I think the most recent thing was intro patterns, where we now have this amazing piece of code where we have a list of intro patterns. And so to work with the list, we go from, F from LTAC1 to LTAC2, where we can take apart the list we have a single intro pattern, but then we have to now go back to LTAC to work on the single intro pattern, do something, and then go back to LTAC 2 as we fold. And so we do like a million transitions between LTAC 1 and LTAC 2 as we go over that list, and it's absolutely beautiful, and it works, and, and it's not a lot of fun. So um, I, this is less of a concrete request, and more of a, um, I feel like, I, I've seen on the, on the roadmap things like, oh, reporting SS Reflect tactics to LTAC 2, which seems to be focused on putting the stuff between proof and QED into the LTAC2 universe, which to me personally is the less interesting part. And what's missing to me is looking more into what can we do to make it possible to write our 
LTAC 1 UI, but backend is LTAC 2, and to get that more and more into the sane land of LTAC 2 and get away from LTAC 1. I resist LTAC using LTAC 2 for a bunch of stuff now to like have NRE things. I think Tate Rose, they wrote that. Um, and, um, but, but there's a lot of friction there. And I think mostly it's just API, uh, API is missing from LTAC 2. And uh, yeah, if there's some way we could make that exchange more productive and kind of reach a fixed point of having sufficiently many APIs, I would be curious to for how we can best work with you all on that. Uh, that was Yano. I just tricked him into working on it. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. I think uh, you should uh, contact Gaetan with with your requests about the language, and uh, that will be put in on the stack. And, well, it's more like a priority queue than a stack, but uh, <laughs> I think you, you, we really want to get to a situation where everybody is, where we can forget about LTAC1. So we need to have the easy usage uh, between proof and QED to be uh, easy enough and uh, the other part to be, uh, to, to, to collect everything we can do in a nice way. So. Let's make sure we don't forget an important functionality. So, I, th I think uh, last time I discussed with Gaetan, it was his plan to do a poll uh, uh, on this kind of topic anyway. So, you'll probably get an opportunity to, to, to speak up. Yeah, thanks. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. I've, uh, I'm using Cog mainly on Windows, and this has gotten significantly more painless over the last couple of years. Uh, so this seems to be working uh, better and better, especially with the Cog platform. And I think when I last uh, tried to install a new version of Cog on Windows last year, there were still some secret steps that you needed to know to get it working properly. And I just checked the installation instruction and it seems that at least one of them has now been made explicit and even automated. So thanks. <laughs> Pass that to me. So I, <clears throat> the Cock platform is a bit of a worry in a, in a way. And this is why uh, we, we insisted uh, to, to Roman that he should put some, some hand on it. And it's, until now, it's, it was a one-man project. And it's a one-man project is a bit of a risk. And especially uh, the person who is doing that is also a senior uh, person in his own organization. He has all the topics to do. And so if anybody wants to get involved into it, uh, I think we will try to make an effort with Roma to make sure that as much as possible is documented to make it become more of a collective effort. Uh, everybody can say, oh, I... I, I have this problem, but I found a way to solve it, and so that we share it uh, more more often. You know, the Cog platform should be collaborative, uh, but not centered on the, the 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 same developers that are doing the the core. And it should be more of a community effort. Uh, so we are we are, we are going to try to to make it happen by making as much as possible documented on how to evolve the core platform. And well, I'm talking uh, for M M Michael uh, now, but uh, I think he, uh, he, he would agree with this. This is also the, the, the reason why we wanted to have an editorial board and things like that. That is to share more of the burden of taking decisions and, and finding solutions to, uh, to bugs. Uh, uh, instead of having a, a single person uh, doing it. Thank you. So let me change the topic again. Uh, on the slides, you had something about um, better support for domain-specific logics like Iris. So what is the plan there? Mm. Well, the, the idea is, actually, is, is it links back to uh, notations and scopes, is to, to have the meta-languages be more flexible in the way you can program the, the elaborator or the tactics, things like this. Uh, and also, uh, in, in general, we are looking for 
I mean, to, to fine tune performance wise uh, the application of the iris tactics, for example, or I mean, tactics that work in a logic embedded in code. Yeah. So we're always interested in this kind of examples. Uh. I see. Is the, and so uh, one of the things about uh, iris proof mode, you know, the, the, the iris context is deeply embedded and it causes for very large proof terms, which slow down the QED time. You know, and is there anything that you can do there to help? Is there any thought about that? Any? You could uh, you could do it more effectively, probably. But uh, I don't have a bulletproof uh, answer. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Thank you. <coughs> to do it more efficiently, the tact, uh, iris tactics. I mean. Uh, on on QEDs, I have a, a a pragmatic solution that's a no good, very bad hack that I highly recommend, uh, which is to replace QED with admitted <laughs> during CI uh, and occasionally run proofs. Uh, I would love to actually see this better supported by Coq. Um This is still a feature request that I would love to just skip proofs temporarily. I think for the most part, you don't need them when rechecking a proof. You only need to run proofs. Or you only need to check proofs occasionally. Uh, for soundness. But you want to check the tactics? Yeah, I still want to run all the tactics. Those break all the time. There, there is actually this experimental compiler is called FCC that can do that if you are interested. But yeah, it's experimental. Uh, regarding this question with the embedded proof context, so, I mean, we thought about this really hard and we found no way to avoid, there's just some fundamental complexity issues here. We think that should be O1 R O N. And then of course things that should be O N become O N squared. Uh, it's just like if you do I assumption, um, in, in Cog assumption X is, is O1 because you just refer to the name, but in Iris it has to go into the context and look up the nth assumption and check that it's what you want. Mm -hmm. And and I mean we, we tried to think about how we could avoid the strings, because I mean strings are weird. To, to get shallow embedding stuff there, but I, nothing that, that we could think of was able to get rid of just this fundamental complexity issue. So, I mean, maybe we just had, didn't have the right idea yet, but I think there is some fairly deep problem there, maybe. It's not just a representation of strings being... No, it's not, I mean, no, no, we, try, we tried representing strings with like a 256 byte constructor per character, and that makes basically no difference. It's not, the strings are not the problem. Okay, interesting. That's great. It means we have some work to do as researchers. Yeah, yeah, there might be actually research <laughs> questions. <laughs> Happy to talk more if you, if you want. But this, is really what we, this is really what we meant by, the, you know, we, we think the iris is a bit of a front runner there, and uh, we want to be able to, to, to be the system of choice to receive, uh, to host, this kind of domain-specific approaches to certain kind of logical problems. And so if we want to do that in a very uh, principled way, there, there is uh, a lot of work to be done, and I think that's, that's among the, the, the roadmap uh, ideas for, for the future rock. Have you seen the iris proof mode used for completely iris things just to get that we, we think you, you, you did a few experiments that show places where, where uh, the, the, uh, the sports really hurts. And so we, we would like to make this more, more, more fluid. Yes, now that we are discussing that, just to mention, you know, this thing you said about uh, reflection, it's not really possible because it's the um, type class at search actually picking the right lemma and the right thing to apply. So we cannot really do it by reflection. So that maybe there is something we can do there, like I don't know, with uh, Cog LP or whatever, to, to pick the right things. But within the, the, the way we are doing it, uh, with t the combination of type classes and tactics, and that's, yeah, I don't think we can do better than we are, what we are doing right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes.
No more questions? No more questions? No. I guess following up on that topic, how many people have a real problem with proof term size and type checking at QED time? Okay. <clears throat> and I assume many of you use type classes. To so there's a big question about bundling and unbundling, and this obviously influences the standard library and math comp and things like that. Are there any thoughts on how evolution there might look? Or what? Or more efficient term representations or things like that. I know with type classes you end up repeating a lot of information a lot of times. I know Lean has uh, things like uh, memoized type checking and things like that. Uh, we could try these optimizations as well. Uh, they've been tried before without so much success in Coq. Maybe we need to revisit why that was the case. Uh, maybe just hash consting in OCaml is very different from hash consting in C++. Also makes a difference. Um, there is um, ideas for, for research on trying to uh, introduce a notion of arity, uh, constants with arity in, uh, in type theory, which would let you avoid repeating parameters of, uh, of constants uh, that we could uh, I mean that we plan to look into uh, to solve that problem in another way by just not repeating stuff that does not need to be repeated. Uh, I'm speculating here, so there's a chance I'm making a fool of myself. Um, but the part of my understanding for why memoizing type checking is hard in Coq is that type checking is like a global imperative step because of universes and things. Um, and my understanding, which is very limited of Lean, is that somehow there, that's not the case. And I wonder if that's related to template universes. Like, if you, if you just don't have them, do you cease to have the like global universe issues, or is there? Is there some is there something one could be that could be done to not have global universe issues? Uh, I mean, the, the kernel type checker is purely functional. I don't think there is any effect there. So the universes are already taken care of separately. So if it's really the type checking of the proof term, then we should be able to memorize uh, the purely functional structure. Yeah. I don't think the universes are. Pro I mean, they're not a problem in this case. I think. Regarding the, the complexity of type checking, I have a, a question about the, the cost of an application of a lemma. If I have a lemma that says P implies P, when I apply this lemma, how much do, does that cost me at type checking time, at QED time? I have the impression that the cost is linear in the size of P and not constant. So if I keep applying the, this trivial lemma to large subterms, then I will pay a lot at QED time. Hmm. So what's your example? You have P in place. I have a trivial lemma with you a small statement, but there is a for all P in it. And my impression is that if I apply it to a large term, then this is going, I'm going to pay several times for type checking P possibly. Hmm. I don't believe so, but okay. uh, yeah, we need to look into the details. It's a standard type checking rule for applications. Uh, just mm -hmm. nothing Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So you need memoization to... Yeah, maybe. Yeah, my impression is that I need memoization if I don't want my subterms to be retype checked okay. many times. Yes, in general, you would need memoization, mm -hmm. which we don't have. Yes, okay. Thank you. I'm really excited to see that you guys are thinking about bringing in ideas from observational type theory into uh, Coq more. Can you talk a little bit more about what that might look like? 
so right now, using the rewrite rules, uh, there is a prototype implementation of this uh, by Loic Puget and Nicolas Tabarro, who have a version of observational type theory working with impredicative prop. Um, and we are undecided yet if we try to actually do it directly in the kernel or if we stay at the, uh, using rewrite rules uh, for now. Um, I think the best ex exposition is their paper uh, for what the theory is going to look like. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, at Bedrock Systems, we've had some recent experiments with mechanisms for fine-tuning kernel reduction um, using the term language, and we think these are very valuable for computational reflective proofs. If you are interested in that, then I would be very interested in chatting with you. It's not really a question for you, but uh, an announcement. Thank you. I know Clément is interested in that, too. Maybe a bit naive question. I was a little bit away from the cock things. Uh, what is the status of standard library as to the leap? Is it the official way to what should I recommend to the new novices? Just rely on the core library which comes with cock or as to the libris now is a is the way to go? The recommendation. I was finishing my notes on the previous question, so I, I will need you to repeat. Is as the libus now as a recommended standard library for Coq? Is uh, what is uh, status of what the status of the lib? What is status of the lib? I wouldn't go as far as saying it's now the recommended one, but we are we're, we want to find a way to to do a, a good synthesis with what exists and. Uh, STDLib is a really uh, interesting proposal. And we, we, we really are thinking of doing more work on converging with this. Any other questions or comments? We have about five minutes, so maybe time for one more question, or we can we can go to lunch now. <laughs> oh, bus. Hungry. We're hungry. Do you know? Uh, I'll keep it short. What, what's the status of SMT integration in Coke? Oh, SMT. SMT. Part of the work that's done with uh, tract and truck is about making it easier to do all the translations you would want to have to use more easily SMT solvers. So the work is still active. Um, but this is not a th th this this specific piece of work is not taken on. Directly by the, the the very inner circle of the Coq developers, so something is happening. It's happening in in a close vicinity because uh, Chantal Keller is a close collaborative uh, collaborator. But uh, uh, I can't really say that they, we have a roadmap for this. And, and there are no projects actually actively using it. There are no projects actively using SMT. Uh, no, not, not, not that I know of, but uh, maybe my, my perception is a bit uh, flawed. Well, well at, least, uh, at least in the, in the area of uh, integration with CoQLSP, we have the same plan as Isabel. So our goal is to do exactly what Isabel does. But yeah, I don't see that happening because, I mean, like, no, just no manpower now. Uh, so uh, at least I think this will be a good start for Coq to 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 do what my, what Isabel people have done so far. I think, but yeah, 
but I'm not sure there is a lot of movement so far. Yeah. Thanks. Anyone else with a final comment? Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, Gabriel took notes and he's going to put them on the cog's lips. So, so you, you should have told me that before because I was painfully taking notes on my phone. <laughs> this, this is the example of collaborative work we are, that we are doing in this community. You see. <laughs> All right, uh, let's give our speakers a hand.